the new channel. The new channel. Hashtag TNC now. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following shows are those of the host, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the new channel. Our passion transforms the community channel that sees all things new. My name is Jennifer Nuya, live streaming from Cavita, Philippines. And you're watching Stories from the Fringe. <music> Please let us know that you can uh, hear as well by letting us in the letting letting us know in the chat box where you are joining us from today. And you can also use the same chat box to drop in your comments or ask your questions or just anything you would like to share with us. We will also use the same chat box to drop in links that you can click on or copy for later use. For those who are tuning in for the first time, Stories from the Fringe is committed to creating a world where individual differences like gender, class, ability, among others, are not only seen and understood, but also celebrated. And we believe that we can all be a part of this collective vision. In order to make the most of our time together, we encourage you to turn off the, all distractions and uh, Prepare to take notes, mental we in, and just be fully immersed with our guest today, Wanda Tan Kalupe. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Tan, um, Wanda Lin Tan uh, Kalupe to our show. She is a multi-awarded international coach and certified public accountant based in Dubai for over 13 years. She's an audit manager turned coach, international speaker, and trainer who was recognized in 2021 as the best career coach awardee by Coach Awards and number one most influential Filipina on LinkedIn by Connected Women. This is out of 11 plus million Filipinos on the platform. Very impressive. Family, life, and service are at the core of everything she does. Using a three-step framework and neuro-linguistic programming, her clients achieve extraordinary results like ranking second in the worldwide CMA board examination, healing 20-year trauma in 45 minutes, and attracting the dream job and more. Let's welcome to the show, Wanda. Hello, Wanda. How do you Hi, do? Jen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. So is there anything that I have not been able to cover in the intro, Wanda? No, that's perfect. <laughs> I don't want to bore anyone. <laughs> no, of course not. I don't think so. So Wanda, um, can you please share with our viewers your journey because you have an extensive experience actually i left the philippines in 2006 
But mm-hmm. prior to that, I used to work with Ernst & Young Philippines and also with Intel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think as you know, at that young age, specifically for Intel, there is so much. I mean, I was I used to handle five. I mean, companies for Intel Philippines for both individual and corporate taxation. And for me, it was very good because I was getting a lot of these exposures to travel, you know, to, mm. to to work with different nationalities. But I think what happened lang is that it became too much for me. I mean, I saw myself, I will I will wake up at like 5 because sometimes I have to go to the office in Cavite. Then I will go home at 6, tapos eat lang, and then work again because, you know, Intel empowers you so much. They will never control you, but you become self-responsible. But because every day I will have like full day meetings, then I sometimes only have time to work in the evening. And I ask myself the question, how long can I survive? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like just the break is only eating and sleeping. And I was like, it's it doesn't look like a sustainable life to me. And no. thankfully, yeah, it, it, it's not that time. So that was 2006. But thankfully, actually, Intel was planning to shift me to another location in Singapore for a regional role. But that time, I was, I was already thinking, I want some change that will give me more flexibility and time. So I have this mm-hmm. friend in Dubai. She's been here for like uh, a, a long period already. And I asked her the question, how's Dubai? So mm-hmm. that conversation led to something because she asked for my CV. Then one day I got this call while walking in sa Manila na they're inviting me. Maybe it's Friday that they're inviting me on Sunday for an interview to Dubai. I thought it was a prank call because I was like, first, I don't have visa. <laughs> I don't have to so, Someone calling me from Dubai and then wasting oh, oh. time and money to, to, to do yeah. the prank call. Okay. So they, they called me, parang sabi nila, um, uh, this is a, uh, an interview, we want to invite you to go to Dubai. Parang two days lang, they're giving me the time. And I was like, walking on the street, it was too noisy. Tsaka syempre, you know, in the Philippines, sometimes it's, you're scared to get your phone out kasi baka makuha, di ba? Kasi yes. naglalakas. So I was like, um, can you just call me later? Because first, I didn't took that call seriously. Parang kasi I don't have visa, I don't have a ticket. Then parang, mm. why so fast, right? And I didn't, mm. I was so scared to keep on talking because somebody might grab my phone. <laughs> kasi mm. it's a busy street and it's a very safe street to walk in. So, and while, you know, I was reflecting, sabi ko, oh my God, that was actually an international opportunity. So mm-hmm. I really prayed, sabi ko, Lord, if this is for me, please mm-hmm. allow me to, you know, let them call me again. Thankfully, mm-hmm. they did. So <laughs> over the weekend, I mean, they can really process a lot of things quickly pala because they have their own, of course, um, the airline, mm-hmm. because it's Emirates Airline eh. So mm-hmm. they flew me on a weekend on December to come here mm-hmm. just for the interview. So that itself is, you know, I'll say a miracle and a blessing. Yes, and, it is. <laughs> super, I super agree. talaga. And marami pang pwedeng ikwento, but I'm gonna stop there. I think, you know, when there's something in your life, I'll say that you want. I mean, God always have another answer for that. Yun ang natutunan ko doon. Yeah. I truly believe that. Yes. And I um, I also suggest to our viewers right now who are looking for a job or that next opportunity trying to build their networks because we will be talking about that, right? Using LinkedIn. Um, Sometimes we need to take the comfort in the thought that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We don't, we don't see the end or the beginning to the end. So sometimes when we pray short sighted in prayers, not in the bar, what we feel is, what we feel and think is the best for us. Usually, yun yung pinupush natin kay God, but actually, He knows better than we do. And um, uh, for me, personally speaking, when I pray, I always, I, I, I have my wants and my desires, but I always tell God, let your will be done. Yeah. Uh, this, this, are, this is my prayer, so I lift it up to you, and then this and better. <laughs> <laughs> That's what and I then the actually, you know, Jen, I mean, after studying a lot of things, right? Because <laughs> I did NLP plus many other energy, whatever I need to understand. And I was thinking, you know, whatever they're teaching is actually in the Bible already. And what you're doing is power of surrender, which is actually the most powerful of all. 
Um, mm. Because this is when you did everything, but at the end of the day, when you say, just let thy will be done, that is when really God create magic and miracle, but it's because you're using the power of surrender to achieve more. And actually, when I started using that, because they always have this terminology, I said, ayun pala yun, kasi sa ating mga Filipino, laging normal sa atin yun, di ba, parang ikaw na po ang bahala, let thy will be done. But there's actually... In, in personal development books term, they call it surrender. And I was like, wow, I never knew there was a terminology for it. When I started to use that again, sobrang, sobrang dami talaga. Even actually coming here, sabi ko kasi, I was also praying, you know, Lord, however you want, because my intention is really to just live life with ease and grace. And sabi ko, however I could be of best service, just lead me yes. there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. I saw your message like, oh, maybe I need to step up for that. I, I felt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And thank you for heeding that call. So I always believe, um, I always believe in div- divine appointments, you know, nothing happens by accident. So as here talking together, sharing this space, and then also trying to provide value to our viewers. This is no accident. This is meant to be. So um let's now go to uh, let's let's go now down to business so our topic now is you will share with our dear viewers how to find the right opportunities through linkedin okay so how did you become one um the number one filipina on linkedin besting 11 plus million filipinos on linkedin actually it was an accident jen (laughs) i'll Uh say Everything that I do is intentional, but whatever comes out of it is something that is never intentional also. I mean, siguro fruits of the, the labor, right? And see, what happened during the pandemic is that a lot of people went through burnout. I mean, a lot of people are suffering mentally, right? And for me, my concept was, wait, I have been there. Let me share my story. Because when I experienced burnout in 2014, I never even knew it was burnout already. But when I was reading through, na, oh my God, silent depression na pala yon. Oh my God, burnout na pala yan. And I thought that, you know, being sick was just a result of, you know, constant stress. Parang naging normal kung nalagi lagi ako may sakit and I was always stressed and sickly. Mm-hmm. But also, what bothered me so much, my children were becoming very sick also. Parang every weekend, we're all only spending on seeing doctors. Mm-hmm. And talagang, I really decided na this has to stop and we need to he- be healed. So that's how I started learning a lot of things and that is that brought me to personal development <laughs> and NLP. And then sabi ko, during the pandemic is wait, I've been using these NLP tools and techniques and my children and I have our own set of tools that we use to cope up with whatever we're going through. So I started sharing that on LinkedIn. I started because I think what was most difficult for me is accepting that I am not okay. Mm-hmm. Kasi diba Jen, sometimes Because we are thought to be thankful But at the same time There's always a thought that bothers you But you cannot even share because of the fear of being judged You know, especially on social media, right? You made a yeah. mistake And then they blew it on another proportion And sharing to another share, I mean, admitting mm-hmm. first to yourself That you're not okay Is number one the most difficult Now even sharing that is another level of difficulty Because, you know, you'll be judged for or parang nasa yun na lahat, tapos ingrata ka, di ba? Parang I was thinking, paano ba yun? But I was also like, mm. let me now be the that person to be to say it's okay to, you know, to share that you're not okay. And mm. I was sharing that journey lang. And that led me to, to many things, to getting the right people on LinkedIn. Kasi people were relating na, oh, kaya pala. Parang, Kasi we, we tend to judge our own feelings, right? And when they mm-hmm. understood that actually accepting your feeling, embracing that and dealing with it is the best way to healing. So mm-hmm. one thing landed after another. And I'll share more of my LinkedIn journey later. Kasi talaga, when you started sharing, or maybe that's the time na to, <laughs> to share. Let me just share my LinkedIn journey so people will understand na, ah, and then, hindi kasi siya intentional. It just happened that mm-hmm. way. And um, mm-hmm. let me just add that. Maybe um, Monica can help me add it to the screen for the presentation. Okay, I will just go through my LinkedIn journey for, for people to, mm-hmm. to understand. 
is it seen na ba, Jenny? Is it full screen already? Yes, I yes. think so. Thank yes. you. Ayan. So what happened to me magically, so March, it was pandemic, I became very active on LinkedIn, sharing my burnout journey, sharing mm -hmm. how I overcame that, and sharing the you know, tools and tips so you can deal with the stress of you know um, the lockdown. And I mean, after a few months, I immediately got recognized by Marketing in Asia. This is a company uh, based in Malaysia. Uh, as mm -hmm. 70 rising personalities on LinkedIn. And then also, one of the things I saw on LinkedIn, they have this pitch competition, uh, which is based in Singapore naman, for mm -hmm. female founders. And I said, wait, I want to join that. Because as a mother, I was thinking, I went through a lot of difficulty because there's no manual, <laughs> nor training how to be a mother. And the way I was mm -hmm. parented is something I don't want to copy 100% to my children. <laughs> I mean, the mm -hmm. times now have evolved that the parenting techniques of the past are not working anymore. So sabi ko, now that I know what worked for me, how my mom, you know, parented me, what works for my children, I really want to help other mothers. So sabi ko, I want to have something like an academy for moms. And when I joined that uh, pitch for Singapore, I actually qualified as top 20 mm -hmm. <laughs> out of that 128 applications. Wonderful. And that is from LinkedIn. So talagang super happy ako. And also in November naman, I was also part of this um, Leza Klang, she's based in Singapore. It's about spend this academy. They had the summit and I was one of the speakers and I shared there how to reinvent invent your career and i think it's about burn i i actually covered both burnout and career invention and i was nominated as one of the best speakers mm -hmm. and similarly as i was pursuing this idea of the working house academy i also got international advisors from germany from here in uae from malaysia from india and that through linkedin alone and mm -hmm. in February, because I was so inspired by my coach, Leza, sabi, kasi we always go live on LinkedIn for my advocacy of Working Moms Academy. Sabi ko, why not apply for my own live? Kasi compared to other I mean, social media platforms, you have to apply for LinkedIn, right? And I even got a message, it will take about two to eight weeks. But mine, I got it in eight days. So that's another miracle for me. And... You know, as I became active, also, even Chinkitan is one of the people, you know, I look up to sa Philippines, di ba? But even mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, I got an endorsement for him on training. Tsaka pag nagko-comment ako dun sa feed niya, he replies, you know, you always have those kilig. <laughs> for me, ah, I always have this kilig fun moments sa, oh my God, nag-reply sa akin, chinkitan ko. <laughs> <laughs> and even, I mean, there are big names like Ariana Huffington who has 10 million followers. I mean, these mm -hmm. people who are big names in the world, I mean, yeah. 10 million followers, but they respond to you. But kahit ba VA nila or whoever, but whenever you got that response, you feel acknowledged like, wow, my my, ano, my idea was valued, right? Mm -hmm. So I just keep on showing up there. And until nga nung June, there was actually a nomination of the most influential Filipino on LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. I was very blessed. Nag number one ako doon. Parang sabi ko nung wow, di ba? <laughs> siguro nga kasi on March, on 2021 then I had like siguro mga 60 plus yung naging LinkedIn lives ko. Talagang super every week nandiyan ako sa LinkedIn. And then mm -hmm. on August, na, one of the things I also did during the pandemic is a live career coaching call. Because I know a lot of people were suffering and I want to help them right away, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the live call on LinkedIn. And because of that initiative as well, I got nominated internationally for a competition for coaches. And mm -hmm. out of, I think there were like, masigur mga 20 plus from different nationalities and from different parts of the world. Nag top three din ako doon. So sabi ko, wow, that's really such a blessing because I think uh, something that live coaching is something that is not done on LinkedIn before. So that helped me stand out as, as a coach. So I got nominated and I got awarded. And then I also started my LinkedIn newsletter called Finding Joy because I was thinking, mm -hmm. you know, it's very difficult to find joy if you were just taught from childhood na hindi pala money or hindi pala career or success you isisik mo but happiness and then the money will follow. So mm -hmm. I started that newsletter and then it's, it just kept on growing. 
And then also, nung March din, I got recognized as top 10 content creator naman. And yun nga, because I just keep on showing up. A lot of things happen, even this um, invitation to be part of the International Women's Day for the Philippine mm-hmm. Expo naman dito sa Dubai, where I got to meet a lot of nationalities. Even the president of, the, of Dubai came eh. So parang, ano parang yung mga star moments mo na ano ba itong nangyayari sa akin. But really, I think all of this is by showing up and um, even I got invited to donate my one of my books to the biggest library here in the Middle East and North Africa region because of that, um, you know, connections I have on LinkedIn as well. And lastly, um, last November, somebody reached out to me and said, you know, you're nominated for Outstanding Leader Award by Education 2.0. So I said, why me? And they said, you know, we saw your profile on LinkedIn and based on their criteria, this is what they said. So, I, you know, I think... When I started, I just, and even now, I just really wanted to always just share. And I just want to to keep on adding value. And mm-hmm. as a result of that, that is what happened to, to my LinkedIn journey. Mm-hmm. So I'm so happy for you. Wonderful, wonderful things that are happening. And you said here to be continued. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will continue reaping the rewards of your labor. Thank you, thank you, Jen. Siguro kasi, I think, and I always believe in the law of reciprocity, di ba? <laughs> Whatever mm-hmm. you give back, it will always come back to you and multiple. And actually, that brings me to, we're talking about, right, how to get the right opportunities through personal branding on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Now, that's my story first, but siguro for those who's gonna watch us replay or those who are watching us live, siguro I want just you know themselves to ask a question ano pang gusto kong matutunan from Wanda or even from this small conversation that we have because when they're clear they can come back and ask any question later and i will be more than happy to answer and that's my linkedin journey na nga and maybe people were asking why linkedin diba because honestly mm-hmm. for me i re- i really never use i thought linkedin is a job platform Parang jobstrip.com. So I never really use it. I just have my profile there for a very, very long time, but I never use it. But Mm -hmm. I also found one person, she's Virginia Bautista, if you've heard of her. She's actually Mm -hmm. the number one LinkedIn personal branding expert. So she was actually teaching me. She's actually my LinkedIn coach. So I know she's mm-hmm. siguro 2016 pa. But even mm-hmm. after getting her as a coach, I didn't even fully apply what she taught me. Kasi parang sa akin, nagpo-post lang ako, but I never understood the algorithm. Mm-hmm. But it was really 2020 where I was becoming very active. And mm-hmm. you know what I learned from LinkedIn? Really, the decision makers are on LinkedIn. Of all the yes. social media platforms, they are there. So this is actually the statistics from LinkedIn, which I want to share. What, what they said here is that four out of five LinkedIn members drive business decisions. And mm-hmm. they actually have two times more buying power than any average web audience. Maybe you'll be asking why. Well, there are 800 plus million members on LinkedIn from 200 cities and countries. There are 180 million senior level influencers and 60 million of that is decision maker and C level executives 10 million talaga. So from I'll say I think LinkedIn worked for me because I was able to get in touch with the right people which I will discuss later that how can you make, you know, advantage of that also so you can achieve your goals on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Jen, feel free to ask me question. Na. Sure. <laughs> just, you just interrupt me. So maybe I want to talk why LinkedIn recovered that already. Now let's talk about why are you not getting the opportunities? What, siguro, Jen, I will ask you, what initial problems or challenges are you facing on LinkedIn? Kasi when I started for me, ah, before I got a LinkedIn coach, sabi ni Virginia, post ka ng post. Post naman ako ng post. Sabi ko, walang nagre walang nagla-like, walang nag-comment. So sabi ko, parang hindi naman nag-work tong LinkedIn na to. And I think for me, it was engagement. That was my initial problem. How about mm-hmm. you? Ano yung ano mo sa LinkedIn? What challenges are you facing when you started using the platform? Well, similar to you, I did not right away uh, appreciated the value of LinkedIn. So, nagsimula din ako ng LinkedIn yata around 2008. And then, I just let it there. <laughs> Tapos, kung may mag, uh, may mag-send ng LinkedIn connection, i-accept ko lang. Right? And then, I don't really post as well. But during the pandemic, 
uh, where, when we're all cooped up in our respective homes, I finally found the, the bandwidth to be more active on LinkedIn. And then that's when I started seeing the value of growing the, the network. Yun nga lang, ang, ang challenge ko dyan is how to weed out yung mga parang feeling ko they're just after the numbers game. You know, mm. um, when let me let me explain further. Like someone would someone would send you a LinkedIn connection request, and then uh -huh. I I always make it a point that after I have um, accepted the friend request, that friend request, seek in connection request, that I say, okay, um, perhaps you might want to explore possible synergies for the things that we do. Okay, so. Uh, here is my uh, Calendly or my scheduling tool. Feel free to, to choose a time that is most convenient to you. And then I would hear crickets, you know, or when I try to reach out to someone and then they would say, I really don't know what, what's the meaning. Like he would say, with your impressive profile, I, I can't see any way that we can synergize. So parang ako, parang, what does that even mean? <laughs> Impressive daw yung profile ko, but he feels that, or she feels na there's no area for possible collaboration. So those are the two things. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the same problem before. I remember, I thought it was a numbers game. Kaya nga, you know, whenever, I was also very intentional on accepting requests. Like, if somebody sends me connection, before I will still review the profile. Because sometimes, you know, right after you receive the connection request, parang they're selling you already. <laughs> parang, do you need blah, blah? Yes, yes. <laughs> they need a website. A they need blah, blah. And I was like, you know, at some point, you got fed up that I'm not here to, to buy. <laughs> I'm just here to add value. And I think, you know, for me, I always feel if the person is right for me. And siguro, and I was being choosy about the connections because I want, I'm not, I never about them. I think I'm more than the numbers. I care more about having the right people in my connections. And I value that. Kasi before pa, I remember yung uso na, just drop your uh, profile so you can grow. Diba may mga ganun pa sila? I never joined yes. the trade. Kasi parang for me, I want the right people to find me. Not just because I wanted to broadcast myself forever. Diba? I want the right per person to connect with me for the right mm -hmm. reason. And mm -hmm. I think when you become intentional, intentional with that, it happens also. Because even when I got recognized as the most influential on LinkedIn, ang, I have really, um, parang siguro less than a thousand followers. Because mm -hmm. even there's a recognition of top 100 influential Filipino on LinkedIn. I never qualified for that because at least they need at least 3,000 following. And I never had that number of followers. And mm -hmm. what... I think I want to also encourage others is it's never about the numbers. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's because these recognitions I got is not based on numbers. Mm -hmm. And if you just come with clear intention, what do you really want? I'll say you will get what you'll get most the budget. And I think when mm -hmm. those people respond to you, na ganun, siguro um, it's really the, not the right person for you. Kasi ako din, I had those people na magsisend sila sa akin, sometimes sa time ko, reply ba ako dito? <laughs> or hindi? But with gratitude na lang and respect, sabi, sorry, this is not for me. Kasi mm -hmm. nga, I think sometimes the conditioning that happen on LinkedIn because of this constant connection and then offering already, people, mm -hmm. you know, got tired of it kaya they're not responding. So, mm -hmm. but I will share with you, ano ba yung ginawa ko <laughs> And actually, okay. let's discuss what are the three reasons why people are not getting the right opportunities on LinkedIn. Number one is about the lack of clarity. Because number one, what is LinkedIn to you? Because to many people, it's a job site. It's just mm -hmm. for reference, but it's it's nothing, diba? But mm -hmm. really, there's so much, I mean, for me, yeah, sometimes I, what I used to do, I will post the same on LinkedIn and I will post the same on Facebook and Facebook groups. Sometimes on some mother groups, I got bashed for sharing my burnout journey. <laughs> but I miss it, I never had that intention, but I don't know why. <laughs> but on LinkedIn, I never got that. And mm -hmm. I think the good thing is that 
if you're clear that LinkedIn is a professional platform with professional people, you get mm. to connect with the right people also. And mm. the clarity that this is not just a job platform, but this is about learning and adding value. Because even now, I don't really use Facebook and not browsing. I actually on LinkedIn only. And because mm-hmm. of Facebook, but there's so much drama, chismes, gossip. And I was like, this is, you know, whatever we surround ourselves with, I know can impact us. And I was like, I never want to buy into these gossips or bashing for what another person did. And on LinkedIn, you will barely see those kind of things, you know, pointing fingers that she's a bad person or she did this or that. But they're very less. They're really professional growth and concept, which I really like. So number one is the clarity. <laughs> I share my perspective on that. Maybe uh, it's easier for people to, you, you say, to do uh, bashing. Um, but they have this term keyboard warriors because some of them, they have fake profiles and they can remain anonymous. Uh, they don't, they're not afraid of the possible consequences of bashing other people, right? Unlike on LinkedIn, you have to have your uh, clear uh, career journey there, right? True. So you have your picture. Mm. So it will be, um, how do you say that? It will be against your reputation if you do that. True. Um, you know, mm, that's very true. So, so thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing tip, uh, the number one reason why we are not getting the right opportunities on LinkedIn. But let's hold on to that thought. Um, okay, Namba, we'll uh, go for a short break. And then we'll get into this after our ad spot. Ah, sige, sige. All right. Thank you.
PNC is an online alternative media platform of online shows for people on the go. Please watch all our shows as seen on the screen. Imagine having your own show, your own playlist, your own content, but we make it easier for you. TNC aims to transform the lives of our viewers through engaging, authentic, and original content. Our vision is to become a global 24-7 live stream channel that showcases Filipino talent, global influencers, cultural intelligence, and ingenuity. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your Thursday mornings with us. You can watch Stories from the Fringe live or on replay via Facebook or YouTube. Follow us on IG, listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just search hashtag at TNC now. For sponsorships, please email now at thenewchannel.com or send us a DM. Enjoy these life-changing shows because we made them just for you. So earlier, before we went on a break, we were just chatting with Wandalin Tan Kalupik from Dubai, and she shared with us her LinkedIn journey and how she became one of the most influential Filipinas on LinkedIn, investing other 11 million Filipinos on LinkedIn. Such a mean feat, right? All right, so welcome back, and she'll continue giving us three reasons on how or why we should use LinkedIn to find the right opportunities for us. Welcome back to the show, Wanda. Hi, Jen. Um, Chige, let's continue the discussion. I think I love what you said, you know, compared to other social media platforms, right? There's somebody called Keyboard Warriors. This is what I don't like. I mean, when you go to Facebook, you don't even know what's real already. And you, because you don't know the people behind the platform and Actually, I remember one of my family members also got, you know, he has this public, I mean, one person is after him and then they're like fake accounts that continue posting about him, which is really annoying, right? Because mm -hmm. this is what is the difference about LinkedIn. Number one, you can only have one profile. There mm -hmm. is, I, I can say there's no fake profile on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. if there is, Number one, and if you feel harassed also, you can actually complain and they can actually remove that profile, which is good. So if you feel violated, you can complain and then they can close that profile. So on LinkedIn, you're only dealing with one person at one time. There's no other profile that he's managing on that account. And also, you know, that's why people are scared to even comment or post because they know that their reputation is at risk and, you know, they can be blocked from the platform forever if they don't use it correctly. So, which mm -hmm. is good, right? Because I have not seen that in any platform where you can report, that's one. Second, that you will have only one profile. And third, you can really go after that person behind, behind the profile to, to get to understand why they're doing that to you, right? So that way, it's really very professional and very respectful to a person mm -hmm. itself. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that and uh, for, for highlighting that, Wanda. So number two, what's the second reason? Oh, sige, let's go back to that slide. I think the second reason why people are not getting the right opportunities is they have no idea. First, they have no idea how the LinkedIn works. Because compared to Facebook, or I'm not I mean, um, an expert in any other platform, but on LinkedIn, what I found what works is about engagement. Mm -hmm. So it's, when you keep, see, for me, what happened, I was able to get these recognitions and accomplishments because I was just consistently adding value. So let's say Chinky Tan will post something. I will comment my thoughts about his post. Oh, I will give my thoughts about it. And when people appreciate that, that's why I felt on LinkedIn, there's so much that you can learn because one person will share his experience. Another person will share the same experience or struggle or story where you can learn so much from. So, so it's about the idea that it's not, you're not just there to access, but you're there to contribute, to add value to, to, to the community. Also, if you lack consistency, because initially that happened for me, I was there, 
and then I don't feel like it's for me, and then I left already. But if you, it's like planting a seed, right? You just consistently mm -hmm. water the plant, nurture it, and then, you know, some fruits will come out of your labor. And that's exactly my story. So maybe if LinkedIn is not happening or you're not getting something from there right now, I mean, it's, it's, you stop, but I think you should, should always continue to find your tribe, to find the right people that resonates you because you always have options to go for these people who are just after the number of followers you know, in terms of growth, but never about the content or the value. But there are a lot of people who are really givers in terms of value, and there's so much to, you know, the lesson that you learn from them. But you get so inspired to show up also because there are a lot of people there so let me now move to actually the next one why you're not getting art but now let's talk about what are the four steps for you to get the right opportunities on LinkedIn because the topic today is about how to get the right opportunities on LinkedIn through personal branding you know when I got coached by Virginia about personal branding I really had no idea what it is and even understanding I was like do I really need that <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean from my own understanding and from this picture itself, number one, if you know who you are, it's so easy to clearly communicate to anybody you deal with on any social media platform. And what makes it good about LinkedIn is that you clearly can showcase who you are, your story, your struggle. Who can you best serve and help others? Because there are 850 million people on LinkedIn. There are many people on social media. But what can always, you know, make you be remembered by another person is by your stories, diba? You will get recognized. So you need to be first clear, who am I? Diba? Mm -hmm. So that when you, that's the identity, eh? What's your identity? Who, who are you? Because when you're clear, then you can easily communicate that and at the same time attract the right people who are actually in the same journey that you are also you need to know the right person because for me i really have no idea about linkedin but when i started to first get the right coach to help me so from the time virginia helped me there's a lot of people i i know i'm never afraid to ask questions <laughs> like if i for example for leza clink i actually just approached her i said leza you're doing this link in life can you teach me how right and then when even i started to get my life i don't even know how it works i even reached out to joe mark and said joe mark i got my link in life approval i had no idea how to do it and then he came and said, okay, let's, your first live will be how to go, um, I don't know, how to use StreamYard on LinkedIn. And, you know, what I also learned on LinkedIn, there's a lot of people who always are ready to help you. But you mm -hmm. need to know the right person so you can accomplish your goals quickly, diba? So they will help you truly. And, I mean, whoever is already living that life that you want was already active. Thing. I think it's the mm -hmm. best person to reach. And even um, one of the guests I have, if you've heard from uh, Link, it's Shay Robottom. She has over a million followers already. And she's the number one video coach on LinkedIn. I have a topic of parenting in 2021, and she continuously shares the concept of narcissist parenting. I mean, I mm -hmm. never understood, oh my God, ganun din palang Filipino culture. <laughs> narcissist parenting din pala tayo. Meron, meron ganun. Meron, meron ganun, And I never thought that she will reply to me, but I really just came to her and said, you know, Shay, I have this parenting um, month to discuss. And I think your journey is an awakening call for parents like me to do mm -hmm. things differently for our children. She yes. said yes. And I na starstruck ako talaga. <laughs> because, but you know, as I get clear of what do I want to achieve from the platform? What's the topic I want to, you know, to discuss? It's easier now for me to go to the right people and the right people always say yes. What they also learned, maybe you think this person has a million followers or whatever, but those people who genuinely want to help will always, always be there. And so you have to know the right person based on your goals, of course. And the third thing is keep expressing your authentic self. Because what they also, I mean, every person wants to be, you know, they said to, to build your brand, people need to trust you. 
And yes. that means you just have to be yourself. There's no need to be anybody else. So when you share your thoughts, number one, you have to be aware, di ba? How is that reflecting your character? Because if you always come din naman from a good place, then you can always share about a good place also, about good thoughts, right? Because the intention is to only share good things. So, but also similarly on LinkedIn, you know, my most viral post is actually when I came back to Dubai in 2019, without a job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kasi we relocated back in the Philippines and then when we decided to come back to Dubai, both my husband and I, we have no job. So I mm-hmm. was actually sharing there my journey that, you know, we only had hope <laughs> mm-hmm. that we will land a job despite what's happening in the economy and we're able to find a job. And LinkedIn is one of the reasons why I was able to land a job in eight days in 2019. And mm-hmm. Even now, the opportunities I'm getting on LinkedIn, it is because people, you know, when people send me connection, they will say, I like what you said on that post of blah, blah, and I feel we're the right person to connect. You know, those people I would love to connect with, but yung mere connections now without reason, sometimes I don't accept them because I really want to be intentional with the kind of people I want to be with. And also, just keep on adding value because it's the law mm-hmm. of reciprocity, di ba? Whatever you give back, it will come back to you in multiple. So I'll say to get the right opportunities on LinkedIn, clearly know yourself, who you are, what are your goals. Know the mm-hmm. right person who can help you be a mentor or a coach. Keep mm-hmm. expressing your authentic self so that you can attract the right people for you. And of course, keep on adding value. Um, that, that's for me. How about you, Jen? Do you want to add something here? Yeah, if I may share my objective estimation about the virality of your LinkedIn posts about you losing a job several years back, um, my my perspective is it became viral because it made you relatable, right? And people felt safe sharing um, with you also their struggles because they felt that I'm not alone. So there are people also who are experiencing the same. And that's an invitation for them to also open up and be authentic about themselves too. Oh, I love it. You know, I got a lot of these messages from LinkedIn. I know. Thank you for your post. It really helped me, you know, Mm -hmm. survive the day. Or because, you know, when you're intentional that I just, I don't need to help everybody. At least you need to inspire one person today. And if you keep with you know that on mind, talagang it will come back to you. I'll just get a uh, thank you for sharing. And I think more than your successes, when you share your struggles, this is what makes you relatable. Because people, mm-hmm. you know what they said, Jen? Everybody is suffering from something. Mm-hmm. But on social media, sabi nga, my, my daughter was telling me, you know why, mommy, on social media, everybody's perfect. And I was yes. telling them, <laughs> that's not Instagram, true. Right? Mga influencers, parang, I woke up like this, <laughs> pero people make up, tapos um, yung kanya coffure is very on point. <laughs> so, I mean, it's disturbing to the point. I mean, for as a parent, like for me, I felt this, because I know my authentic self and I express that fully. But when I get this feedback from my children, why people are perfect on social media and she feels unworthy or imperfect herself. You know, I it it's disturbing for me what kind of social media she's into. <laughs> so, but because she's never using Facebook, but she's now on Instagram. And I was telling her, you just have to be careful what you feed yourself, deba right? Because yes. I number one, whatever you're consuming on social media, it should inspire you. Eh? It should not make you feel unworthy. Or sometimes if if they're really people are sharing their accomplishments, for me, ah, what work is that? I, 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 someday I'm gonna be like that. Or I know my time mm-hmm. is coming. And mm-hmm. it does. So, if you feel sometimes, but why is social media only showing what's what's good? I'll say, Number one, <laughs> not everybody is like that. And actually, mm. my advice, show your most vulnerable self. Because mm. when you do that, people will understand that number one, they are not alone. You're helping them on their journey. And then you're inspiring them. And that's why on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn life, I always, we, I have this career invention series where, because the concept is that for people to understand, if I can do it, so can you. 
And yeah. the same thing, I keep on sharing, I'm not perfect on LinkedIn, I'm not perfect on anything, but I'm only here to share my story because whatever I have accomplished, I always believe anybody can do that and anybody can even surpass that. Eh? Because for me, I went through a lot of things, pa, but for people, you know, if you already learn, then it's easier for you to get it right. So, mm-hmm. yon, um, I think that that's my take on that. And LinkedIn is not only about getting clients, it's also about getting a job. So mm-hmm. the good thing, you know, funny, Jen, for me, because I'm very straightforward, If that's why knowing yourself is very important. I know who I am. So when I reach out to employers, uh, potential employers, I reach out to the president of the company. So I will do the good thing about LinkedIn. You go to the company profile, right away you can see the president or yes. the people under the company. Or mm-hmm. similarly, you can look for the president, I mean, in Google and then find the president on LinkedIn you can reach out to the president or send an email. For me, this is what I do. I will always go back. I will go straight to the decision maker and Mm -hmm. introduce myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I will say, my name is Wanda. This is my experience. And this is Mm -hmm. how I think I can add value to your organization. Because see, number one, what I also realized, the people at the top appreciates courage. I mean, because really, I mean, it takes a lot of gut, di ba? <laughs> For me, yeah, it takes a lot of gut and courage. Oh, oh. I, I think, I mean, when you're at the top, you appreciate people who have the courage to to talk about themselves, di ba? And it's not mm-hmm. even self-promoting. It's just about clearly, authentically sharing who you are, what you do, yeah. and how you can help the company. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not about impressing, but impressing upon why you can add value. So, mm-hmm. kaya nga, the moment I know myself na this is what I want, this is how I think I believe I can add value. This is when mm-hmm. I found the courage to go to the president and introduce myself, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My name is blah, blah, and blah, blah. Even when I do this link in lives, I always approach, I mean, on the upcoming lives, I actually wanted to interview the top 50 mm-hmm. impactful people on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And you know, they're really big names already and they have very big following. Now, when mm-hmm. I go to them, I mean, the first question is, why will I even go for your live, right? How many viewership, whatever. But I will always just say, um, my name is Wanda. I am the first Filipina LinkedIn live broadcaster. My intention is to inspire another person, diba? Mm-hmm. Because that really is my intention. And I know your journey, you know, mm-hmm. to whatever um, can help you know, inspire another person. And a lot mm. of people say yes. I mean, some mm. people might just not read your email, but it's okay because the right, I'll say the right person that's aligned to your goals will always say yes. So be it a guest, be it an employment, you go mm. straight to that decision maker. You can actually, on LinkedIn, pa, what's best, you actually know who's the recruiter, right? And mm-hmm. If you feel that sending message is not for you, that's okay. Because also, if you start commenting on their profiles, like for example, the president of whatever is posting something. Now, if mm-hmm. you give an insightful comment, diba, first they will, no, sino ba tong person na to? <laughs> diba? They will get curious. Second, if you actually leave a thought that's insightful and meaningful, you will create an impression already, right? That you, you don't even have to impress, but automatically, they will see you and they will know you. That's why commenting on people's posts is actually very good because that is where you will get recognized, eh? for who you really are and what you can do. Mm-hmm. And that's that's that said. I mean, if you want LinkedIn to be an opportunity for you, I mean, even college professionals, I actually mm-hmm. will encourage them. Kahit college ka pa lang, you start building your profile on LinkedIn. Number one, you'll be inspired by the number of stories of people mm-hmm. who started from nothing, but they are mm-hmm. now something. Second, mm-hmm. if you actually can connect to these big people already, you can learn international jobs, right? Because I'll say you're always one question away from getting that goal or opportunity that you have. And maybe a lot of person will say yeah, no, but if one person says, imagine what would that do for you, right? So that, that that's the thing that I want to encourage. I think Oh yeah, that's the last part of uh, my presentation. If if you know some of our uh, viewers have questions, I'll be more than happy to answer that. Or Jen, do you have any an- any questions for me? 
Um, no question, but I'd like to thank you for underscoring, you know, doing the outreach. And you kept saying that planting the seeds. So for our viewers who are not looking actively for a job, actually, you can already start planting those seeds. You can already do the outreach. Kasi minsan ang, ang problema natin is we only do the outreach when we need the job. Diba? Oh. So parang mm. ang naman na mas tuloy, when you reach out to someone and they don't even know you, you have not engaged with them previously, and then you just say, Hi, I'm Jennifer. I need a job. Can you help me find a job? It's not in the serving, right? It's not True. in adding. You're not coming... To, the, to that space of adding value. Parang gusto mo kagad mag-take. Wala ka pang binibigay. And it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Diba? Doon sa, true, true. Sa hihingian mo ng, shall we say, favor. Diba? So again, tama rin naman yung sinabi mo. And that's the same thing that I tell my daughter. Uh, once she reaches 18, kahit na nag-aaral pa lang siya, it's a good thing to already create a LinkedIn profile so that she can already connect with the decision makers. And not only that, also to learn from them. Kasi maraming mga bagay tayo na natututunan sa school. But mas marami yung bagay na natututunan natin from experiences of others. Um experience is a uh, is a very good teacher pero you don't want sana as much as possible to learn from your own experience might as well it's better to learn from the experiences of others true <laughs> yan true yan jen you know what i always agree is that when you actually learn from the experience of others it's a shortcut for you way eh? yes like for example um on linkedin i was able to benefit a lot from the linkedin coaches that i work with diba mm-hmm. Kasi nga, they taught me already. So, it, if you really want to accelerate your progress, I mean, I am the person I am today. I've worked through so many coaches, di ba? <laughs> From writing coach to speaking coach. I mean, lahat yan kinar. Kasi parang sa akin, I don't know anything. I'm starting from zero and I want to learn. And I want to learn from the best. That's my concept about life, eh. And experience is always the best teacher what what is also disturbing now is the world is constantly changing and the way they're teaching in school diba i remember my daughter was um telling me the other day mommy i have to conform to the number of words and she's a creative writer she really likes when she writes very well so but she was very bothered how she got lower grades because she exceeded the number of words or mm-hmm. you know, she cannot take the the, num- the the thing that she had to conform i mean it's not right or wrong but for me you know, sometimes I always have to filter what is useful and what is not, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, ganun din, in on LinkedIn, on any social media platform, whatever is useful to you. And, you know, a lot of, going back also to what you said, that, you know, you go to a profile, you immediately ask them, can you help me find a job? Actually, I always, I'll get a lot of this, but, but sometimes, you know what I do? I said, I don't know anything, but if you need a job, let me help you. If I really find a person desperate, Sabi ko, let me help you through career coaching so you can land the job quickly. There mm-hmm. are some people will not even respond there eh, because they're not interested to learn. They just really mm-hmm. want to get hard. And that's wrong. Because mm-hmm. see, one of the person who approached me who said, um, you know, I want to get an internship. I said, book a time with me and I will help you for free. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. I help her structure the way she wrote, because it's also the way of writing, Kasi parang when you just say, I'm blah, blah, I want a job, give me now. Parang, oh, why? <laughs> so, I help her structure in terms of introducing herself, why she wants an internship, and what value can she give mm-hmm. as an intern with the skill set, with the attitude um, that she has. And, yes. I mean, in a, in a month or so, she was able to get that internship. And I know she she sent a lot of these emails to a lot of people on LinkedIn, but it didn't work because the messaging was wrong. But when mm-hmm. the message was, you know, it was authentically her, <laughs> it was polite, it was respectful, people started responding. So it's about getting the right person. It's also about mm-hmm. getting your message right, diba? Kaya you have to know yourself muna talaga how you kasi it's like sabi nga it's like a date when you go for a date you just say hi I'm blah blah let's go out 
<laughs> Ganon din yan eh. So, we have to be cautious and careful, I'll say, about everything that we do. Mm. This has been a wonderful conversation, uh, Wanda. And I really learned a lot. I'm pretty sure that our viewers also appreciated you sharing your journey and also uh, your insights about um, leveraging LinkedIn to get the right opportunities. So um, how can our viewers continue following you on social media, learning more about the work that you do? Um, I'll say please connect with me on LinkedIn, www.linkedin.com, Coach Wanda. Yan. Or just find me there, Wanda Lintan Kalupig. I'm only one person <laughs> on LinkedIn. So uh, you either please connect with me. I would love that. Or follow me so I can, you know, get inspired by whatever I'm doing. Also, I have this newsletter. The moment you go to my profile, you can right away see the newsletter that I have that you can subscribe mm -hmm. to. So, and the best way to work with me is yeah, just connect with me on LinkedIn because see, my mm -hmm. intention is always to be of best help to others based on my journey, the journeys that my clients. And mm -hmm. it's about understanding what's your problem and, you know, mm -hmm. offering a solution just for you. Because what they also learned after working with many clients, every client have their own problems. That's why you need to personalize whatever coaching or training program you have to do for them. So reach mm -hmm. out to me if there's any way I can support you. Achieve your goals on LinkedIn and in life. Thank you so much, Wanda. Thank you for, again, uh, spending your precious time with us in today's episode. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. And let me take this opportunity to thank my um, the team who has been helping us for this season. Thank you, Direct Monica, Direct Jan, also Direct Jens, uh, Direct Jay Sad, and... Also, thank you to um, Apple, Manansala uh, uh, Splana, the executive producer and president of uh, the new channel. Um, all, what shall I say? So all things must come to, uh, to an end. So this is our uh, season ender. Thank you so much for spending your Thursday mornings with Stories from the Fringe. I hope that you've learned a lot uh, from the brilliant guests that we've had for the last uh, few weeks. And um, of course, this is not goodbye. I'll see you soon. We'll just uh, be taking a season break and uh, we'll come up with an even better, better show for you next season. So thank you once again for spending your Thursday morning with us today and have a good rest of your day and evening, depending on where you are in the world. God bless everyone.